Hey, have you taken some time to love yourself today? Oh, hi. Thanks for checking in. I'm still a piece of garbage. Hi, hi, hi. Hi. <sighs> hi. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm going to get deep with you guys. Okay, so I never thought I would ever do like any videos like this, like, you know, but I've seen a lot of the YouTubers like, like, you know, sit down and just get deep, which I personally think is very, very brave. Well, in my opinion, because like, I don't think it's easy to sit down and get deep with a camera. Like when I speak to someone, I'm, and I'm like opening up to them and, like, and I'm expressing my feelings, I, I need some form of acknowledgement, you know, not like an okay or a sure, because I can tell you that drives me insane. I need some form of engagement. Like I need to see that you are actually listening to me, you know? Know what I mean for example like if someone is speaking to me and um, and they're opening up to me or they're telling me something that I've done to affect them like I'm not gonna just be like okay like I'm not gonna do that to them I'm just I'm gonna ask them questions I'm gonna try and engage with them I'm gonna have a conversation so that we can end off at a place where the person who was feeling some type of way feels somewhat a bit better you know if you know someone that okays people or shares people because I don't I don't think you understand it's like okay like think what you want to like share think what you want to think if you know someone who does that dude I give you permission to slap them like slap them back into their mother's womb so that they, when they are reborn they're born with manners because it's always those people that are like they care about you who actually pull some type of shit like that they'll be like okay and make you feel like complete crap for opening up to them in the first place like it, it's just it's just not okay i can't remember why i went off on this tangent oh it was, just, it was why i don't get deep like i don't get deep on cameras because like when i get deep on camera i'm just speaking to the camera like what i'm seeing right now i'm seeing the camera and it just makes me feel weird it makes me feel like no one's really acknowledging what i'm saying so i feel like I'm just wilding for no reason but alas I'm trying to grow so yeah um so I'm not too sure about you guys but um my lockdown experience has been a wave of emotions like it started off great and and then it just it just turned into I don't even know what it turned into and I was stressed all the time I was tense all the time like I was emotional all the time oh, there's so much going on everywhere but the three main factors were uni work and my relationship and when the semester ended i was just like i need a break from all of this i hit, hit up my dad was like please fly me home you flew me back to Joburg, and i genuinely slept in peace because i didn't have to worry about uni i didn't have to worry about work and it was good the only problem was the break that i needed from my relationship was non-existent because i was still holding on to that and then i realized why i was doing that and it was because i fear being alone which doesn't make sense because I'm living in a household with my parents and my sister and my dogs and my cats. But essentially that's not the same thing. I, I, I fear being alone emotionally, you know? Like I fear not having that intimacy and like I know I'm being so, like being far away from him that's already like space. But that's not the chat, you know what I mean? I, I know a lot of people feel the same way. It's, I, I wouldn't be making this video if... <sighs> There's so much noise and I can't film. Anyways, um, I wouldn't be making this video if like this wasn't a rational feeling. And taking a break from your significant other isn't easy. But I genuinely feel that if you are in a relationship because you fear being alone, it's very dangerous. Like, it's dangerous to your relationship and it's dangerous to yourself because you're going to find yourself settling for things that you shouldn't be settling for and you're going to find yourself putting up for things that you should never put up with. You're going to damage yourself to the point where your self-esteem will never, ever, 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 ever be repaired. And I don't think you want that now, ever. I don't think you want that in a partner, especially, as well. So, yeah. So, my boyfriend and I are currently taking a break right now not in because of anything in particular that he did but because i want to fall in love with myself again um not for him not for our relationship but for myself i just i literally came to the conclusion that me being the best version of myself and him being the best version of himself would create a good foundation for our relationship so that we can just grow so yeah it was it was very challenging from in, on, from the start um i think i found some things that helped me get through this time and that's what this video is about so grab a bottle of water subscribe if you're new and let's get into this video so what is self-love defined it's having regard for one's well-being and happiness so you having regard for your own well-being and your own happiness and what is a self-love ritual sorry i just have to read this part because i just thought this was just amazing it's little acts of love we can do to help turn our attention to our needs help ground and center us and at best help us to go inward and calm the noise of life that was very beautiful I think that's super important to realize because I think a lot of people think that self-love and like, you know, self-help or whatever, those, those little things require you to book yourself into the West Cliff or, you know, get a five-star massage or eat at a five-star restaurant and whatever. Like, and it's just like, you don't need to do that. 
Like, you know, you can literally do self-love literally five minutes before you go to bed and it's free and you don't have to bother anyone and you don't need anyone and you don't need to bother your bank account or anything like that. And I've been doing these little acts of self-love for myself, especially before bed, because I've kind of, for myself, my goal is to achieve better sleep and get enough rest for the day. And I think doing my acts of self-love literally helped me sleep better. I think nighttime for me is like, that's when I'm the most alone with my thoughts the most. I don't know how to say that probably, but I think you get what I'm trying to say. And um, it's the time that I miss my boyfriend the most. Even before we went on this break, like I would still miss him the most at night because that was our time together. And yeah, I just realized that in order for me to get a good amount of sleep, I can't actually just be chilling in bed and overthinking things that I shouldn't be overthinking. So my first self-love ritual is journaling. I used to journal in the evening and then when I started my S, waking up at 6 a.m. for a week challenge, um, I started journaling in the morning and then eventually I just decided to journal at night. And for me, journaling twice a day is so positive because I didn't realize the wave of emotions I experience on a daily basis until I wrote it and I put it down in my book. And it's something that helps me in the long run because if something is bothering me, like when I write it and I get it out there, I feel like it's gone, it's, it's done. And like when I'm waking up in the morning, obviously so little has happened to bother me unless I've had a bad night's sleep or I've had a bad dream. But in the morning, I'm always just super positive and like I can guarantee you nine out of 10, something has ha happened during the day that has bothered me and I wanna get it off my chest before I go to sleep. Because I, if I get it off my chest before I go to sleep, I know that I'll sleep better. So, so I journal and um, I think also journaling at night helped me pinpoint what exactly would bother me during the day so that if that problem arised, I knew how to deal with it in the future. Do you know what I mean? So so yeah, so journaling twice a day actually has become a very prominent thing in my life right now. I know it hasn't been a long time since I've started doing it, but I genuinely can't actually go to bed without doing it. It's super easy, you just grab a book, like a notebook or something like that. You grab a pen and you just start writing and just start writing how you feel or if not just Google like journal prompts and genuinely those prompts really help me because like it'll be like what brings you peace and balance in your life. And I'll just think about it and I'll be like, hmm, living in a calm space that there's no one judging you or whatever or like that. And then like just by saying that, I just like venture into what has been bothering me. Who in my life has been judging me? Why do I feel uncomfortable in certain situations and all that jazz? And I'll just go, <gasps> and that's the change just from a journal prompt, you know what I mean? And for those people who prefer things more digital, like there's, there's this thing called penzu.com. Like if you go on penzu.com, you can literally like journal on the go, like from your phone, there's an app, or you can just type it on your laptop and it just saves it for you. It makes journaling on the go easy as one, two, three, trust me. Um, I also consider taking care of my body a self-care ritual and not necessarily physically, like working out, exercising, just like, okay, it's also physically. It's, yeah. So when I say taking care of my body, I mean like literally just hopping into the shower, like using like a nice soap, lathering my body, you know, um, moisturizing my body and brushing my teeth, doing my skincare. And like, I feel like such a bad bitch when I feel clean and I'm getting into bed, like literally that alone can literally put me to sleep you know what i mean so yeah like showering at night which is a big thing for me because like in joburg it is so cold especially in the winter time that and my room is so cold so when i take a shower and I, like a nice hot shower and i come out the shower i feel colder than what i initially felt because my room is so cold but anyways um it's getting a bit warmer now and i'm actually enjoying the nighttime showers and the nighttime skincare and the nighttime brushing my teeth which if you watch my get ready with me you'll know that's a lot for me because i only used to brush my teeth once a day and now i'm brushing it twice so yeah how i've never had any cavities i don't know I need so much sugar, like, it's crazy. My next self-care ritual is reading. So before I go into like why it's helped me, this is the book that I'm reading. It's called Bear by Jackie Pamotze. Is it Pamotze? Pamotze? Bear. Super good, super great. I recommend that you read it. It's like 200 pages and it's a very good read. It's a very good read. It's easy, but not that easy. It's not like it's easy, but uncomfortable to read, but it, you want to read it. That's the thing. So for me, reading before bed used to be something I used to do when I was younger. And now like with Netflix and like Showmax and all that jazz, I have such a bad habit of just using television shows to fall asleep, which is so bad because I know I'm going to wake up because I'm going to fall asleep to it and I'm going to wake up in the middle of the night because a TV show is running in the background. So this is my last one. I want to save this bit so when I can appreciate it. Yeah, so reading myself to sleep is really good. And I joined this book club 
created by the bliss bean for those who watch the bliss bean on youtube you'll know what i'm talking about but she created this like facebook book club which i'm super excited that i joined and i got approved to join which is great um they're not reading this book that they're reading elsewhere by this lady named rosita something and it's about like her traveling it's kind of like I, I don't know when i looked at it i thought about ebay love which i'm gonna read next but i just wanted to read this and it's just it's so nice being able like hitting 10 o'clock at night and switching off all your like digitals and all that jazz and just having a book and going to bed i'm not gonna lie i cried yesterday when i read a chapter from this book because i was just like i don't understand where men get off thinking they can treat women the way that they do <sighs> That's so frustrating. But yeah, um, reading is a very dear soul care ritual that I've started to really enjoy. And it's something that I'm actually gonna take with me throughout. I think reading myself to bed is, is great. And I think that it would also help me achieve my reading goal for the year. I said that I wanted to read 52 books. How many books have I read this year that aren't um, prescribed? Three. Four including this one. So maybe I'm not gonna reach my reading goal. But you never know, I've got like half the year to go. I've started reading this book yesterday. No, two days ago. I started reading it then and I'm almost done now, so. So if I'm feeling extremely bothered and journaling and taking a shower hasn't relieved any of my tension or how I feel, I just meditate. There's actually something special and unique about meditating and meditation itself. It's just like, it's very weird. It's like, you're just sitting there and you are one with your breathing. And for me, concentrating on my breathing makes me feel like I'm like exhaling all my problems, you know? It's, it's, it's actually magnificent. So clicking, like going onto YouTube and, and like searching a guided meditation, or I know some people like using the app Headspace. I wish this video was sponsored by Headspace because then I would go in and all about Headspace because Headspace is amazing, but they haven't sponsored me, so I'm not gonna give them free advertisement, even though this is not really advertisement at all because it's like one person watching this. It's also meditation is also different manifestation. If you're not even that bothered throughout the day and you, you feel like meditating because you want to get your manifestations across to the universe, yes, I'm that bitch. Um, yeah, you go click a guided meditation for manifesting, I don't know, wealth or health or prosperity, love, you know, commitment or something like that. And like, you know, you just sit there, plug yourself in as Ms. Hosking would say in English and just listen to it and be in tune with yourself and your thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> Um, my last self-care ritual that um, I really enjoy doing before bed after I shower is some yoga. Um, I don't do it all the time. I want to do it all the time now. I've started the 30 day yoga challenge with Adrian and it's, it's really cool and I'm enjoying it a lot. Um, well, I can't say I'm enjoying it a lot when I'm only on day two. The thing is like, I used to think that I was so tense all the time because I was sitting at my desk and I was working all the time. Yes, that is a factor and my posture is a factor, but I realized that my mind is super tense and my mind doesn't want to just keep all that tense action here it feels like it, it, it just projects it to my my body so you know, like i feel weird like when i move my body and it hurts in places that it shouldn't be hurting i mean i'm only 22 years old like i shouldn't be like this yes i don't exercise that much but i'm exercising now but yeah yoga has really just like stretching my body has really made me feel better and more at ease so when i like climb into bed i feel like i melt into my bed and i fall asleep and i think that's the best feeling in the world um again yeah i'm doing the yoga with adrian but before I would like just go on like Pinterest or something and look at yoga poses that I can do or yoga stretches before bed and I would do them and I'd feel a lot better but there are hundreds and thousands of videos that you can literally look through on YouTube like it's crazy everyone does yoga nowadays um, or everyone does some basic stretches or everyone is a, a yogi yogi that's such a cute word yeah those are those are my self-care rituals there are so many that other people do there's some people like cooking for themselves some people like cleaning like anything that you do that brings you joy and peace to yourself you're more than welcome to do the ones that i mentioned are just the ones that resonate with me the most i recommend that you give them a try and also you don't need to be going through something deep to treat yourself with love you don't need to be going through heartbreak or hardship just to treat yourself with love self-love does not make you selfish self-love does not make you a narcissist anyway if you've made it this far thank you so much please like if you haven't subscribed please subscribe and join the family we are small but um i love it a lot but i would be nice if you joined and helped me grow anyways be kind to yourself and i'm sending you so much love <laughs>